coming up today on Bridges, we will talk about how it's never too late to make your next days your best days. Glad you could join us today on Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter, and we're going to talk about how you can make your next days your best days. And Adonis Lindsay, author and pastor, is here with me today. Good to have you back, Adonis. Hey, it's always good to be here with you, Monica. Thank you so much for having me back. I am so glad to, and I am all, I'm delighted to be talking with you about your book, Next. And when somebody says to me, make your next days your best days, that is just so filled with hope and promise yes. for all of yes. us. How do we do that? You know, I believe it just starts with that decision. That's, that's, that's key right there, making that decision, making a choice, and deciding that the life that I'm still uh, dreaming about, but maybe I'm not living it yet, it's still out there for me, and I can begin to make that decision from this point on to start making every day count, making every day the best that it can be. Uh, I, can, I can change my attitude. Mm -hmm. I can start having a more positive outlook on where I am in life, and that's going to posture me and set me up to enjoy every day and no matter if I reach my dream that day or not, I tell people all the time, if, if it didn't happen today, then guess what? It might happen tomorrow. That's exactly keep right. Keep moving forward. You've <laughs> yes. got to keep momentum going. You've got to keep moving forward until you reach that goal. That's right. You know, because I know, Adonis, a lot of people watching right now would say, oh, but, you know, that's good for everybody else. <laughs> There's nothing next for me. This is the way it's always been. It's always going to be. It's, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I say you've chosen to, to buy into the lie. And it, the lie is it is not too late for you to get up from where you are and start dreaming again. A lot mm -hmm. of people, because of circumstances, Monica, sure. disappointments, maybe they stepped out in faith and were disappointed because it didn't work out mm -hmm. the way they had envisioned. And they've taken that dream and they've put it back up on the shelf. Uh, they're too afraid to go back and dream again, reach for it right. again. Well, I'm here to tell you today, uh, that's why I wrote next. I wanted to create a practical resource, a tool that anybody can read. It's mm -hmm. an easy read, yes. but that anybody can take the, the applications that are in that book and apply it to their life and start walking and moving closer to their next. So it's never too late. You can start right now. What's worse is waiting and then two years from now, you would have wished you would have started today right. with going after your dream. Because two years yeah. from now, it's even later. It's later. You know, and that's, yeah. like, that's like the lie. That's the yes. deception that we don't see. We think, oh, it's too late. Nothing else I can do. Well, if you don't do anything else, it's going to be five years later exactly. in five years. Yeah. So if we start now yes. changing up some things, reframing our attitude, saying, okay, well, maybe I did waste some years. Maybe I did make some bad decisions. Yeah. Maybe other people did wrong me. Yeah. But it's not too late, not too late. to make it's my next right. days my right best now, days. I can pick myself up. Mm -hmm from discouragement, I can pick myself sure. up from disappointment, I can pick myself up and I can check my attitude and I can I can, I can, can get with God and I can say, you know, Lord, I, I, I'm disappointed in what hasn't happened yeah. and, and I'm dealing with that right now. And so if you're honest with God and say, I'm dealing with that, God help me, Holy Spirit help That's me with right. that. And then God comes in and gives you a blank canvas and said, okay, hey, let's let's get some things straight. Let's get some things worked out. Here's a, here's a blank canvas. Let's start from right here mm -hmm. and start moving Moving you closer to your dreams. Yeah. It's never too late, Monica. I think uh, most people, they just reach that place where they don't start. That's right. That's it. That's right. You know, I said this earlier, but Don Shula quoted, he said, the start is what stops most people. <laughs> you know, it's, it's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yes. go after that. So it's never too late. It's never too late to start dreaming again. It's never too late to go after those those far-fetched, those wild dreams. That's right. Listen, this is the moment right now because a lot of people, listen, they will live their life unfulfilled. That's right. They will live their life thinking that time has passed them by, but then you have a whole group of people that are, wait a minute, no way. I still got a lot of life in me. I got mm -hmm. a lot of time left. I can do this. I've just got to get back in the game yes. and start going after that dream. That's right. And I think when you talked about, you know, it's not too late and when we really invite God yes. into the process, into what is our next, that God is so gracious. He gives us that, you know, that blank canvas. Yes. And then with that blank canvas, we've really got to plan 
prepare and do. You know, you, it's not just God's just not going <laughs> to exactly. color up that canvas exactly all by Himself. We've got to do exactly. some stuff. We've got to plan and prepare yes. and do. Yes, it's 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 a life plan. You know, mm -hmm. when people get ready to start a business, you know, the first thing that somebody challenges them with is, "Hey, where's your business That's plan?" That's right. So if you've got a dream or a vision or a goal for your life, hey, where's that goal plan? Where are the steps that you can uh, literally show me that you've written down that this is the process, this is step one of what you're going to do, this is step two, this is step three. You've got to have that written out because where there's no vision, that's right. the people perish. And so that's why God says, write the vision down. Mm -hmm. What is he saying? Write the plan down. So when you spend that time with God, you invite God into that process. Mm -hmm. You've got to be listening and, and listening to what God is saying. So you can, uh, with God, you partner with him and begin to write out those steps because at the end of the day, you still need to have a plan. Listen, that's if you right. don't plan, then by default, you've planned to fail. That's right. And, and that becomes cyclical if you never write down a plan. So you've got a plan. So you've got to map that out. Who are the people you need to connect with? Uh, do you need to go back to school? Do you need to get more college credits? What do you need to do? Uh, I tell people too, listen, if you don't like your current job, okay, check your attitude, okay? Because here's <laughs> the deal. You can have this big vision from God that you're going to be this great person, uh, but if you're, not, if you're not at your A game, at your current job, mm -hmm then those are some character issues that are going on. So have a plan of being the best you can be in your current job and if you're in school, practical whatever you're things. doing, practical yes. things. Be the best that you mm -hmm. can be at that. And that's still planning for your future. It is. That's part of the preparation. Yes. You know, I'd say even ask the people around you, what kind of an employee am I? What kind of a job exactly. am I doing? I mean, there's some things we can look at. Do I get there on time? Yes. Do, am I ever willing to do anything extra, Absolutely. as my yeah. grandma would and I, say? I, I, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I guarantee you, if you sit down with your boss and have that honest conversation, uh, you know, sir, ma'am, I need some feedback because yeah. these are some things I'm thinking about doing. And and uh, but how am I doing right now? Mm -hmm. can, you, can you show me some things where I could be missing the mark or I'm not giving 110 percent? Because here's the deal: you know, you may have a vision to have your own business, but guess what? If you're a lousy employee, you're sowing seed. You may go off and start that business, but you're going to reap that somewhere. And the last thing you want to do is end up with some lousy employees that are not representing you that's to right. the fullest. Mm -hmm. And so right now, that's still part of the plan. You know, the other day I was, I was sharing this message with some people and I said, it just dawned on me, you know, it's, it's, uh, I said, David, I said, I said, before he ever uh, defeated Goliath, I said, this is so key. And before God ever put him in charge yeah. over his people, David kept sheep and David had to fight with a bear that's first. Right. Okay, David had to fight with a lion. And, and before there was ever any calling to lead a nation, that's right. That is so key. You know, Joseph, God had to make sure he could, he could watch over people in prison before he right. watched over his entire nation. Mm -hmm. And so it's all a process. So when you begin to write those plans out, and here's the deal, you can write out a plan, but you still have to start it. You've got <laughs> yes, to work you it. Anything yes, will you work do. if you work it. That's right. So you've got to work that plan that you've taken the time to write out. Uh, maybe you've talked to some, some outside influence and they begin to, to, to see it from 50,000 feet in the air. And you're able to say, hey, can you give me some honest feedback? What are some steps that I need to be taking? And they can give you that feedback without you getting offended. That's right. You know, if they can say, you know what, you, you, you'd be a great employee. Uh, if you just watch your conversation. Yes. You know, something that simple. And you don't need to answer back with, well, I exactly. only said that because of this. Exactly. And I wouldn't have done that if that didn't happen. Just just take just it. Just take it you know? and process mm -hmm. it because it's only going to make you better. Mm -hmm. And once again, that is still part of the plan. Mm -hmm. And you've got to plan, you've got to prepare. That whole preparing stage, once again, and we talked about it earlier, but it's it's connecting with the right people. It's uh, acquiring the, the skill sets that you need. It's increasing your capacity. What are you doing? You are getting ready for more. You're That's getting right. ready. Because the last thing God wants you to do is walk into your next and your character can't sustain that. Your skill set can't sustain that. It will and crush you. And we see you. that, we see all, that the all the time. People getting ahead of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so if you stick to the plan, you know, one of my favorite TV shows, The A-Team, Hannibal Smith <laughs> would always say, I love it when a plan comes together. Yes. So if you can stick to the plan that you've written out, I guarantee you it, it's not going to happen overnight. No. But if you commit to it, it won't happen eventually, but 
or immediately, but it will happen eventually yes. if you stick to it. And you know, even if we plan and prepare and do, and it doesn't happen exactly the way, God has a way of those course corrections. Yes. We'll see it as we go, yes. but if it's not written down, and if we're not prepared, yeah. we won't know when God yeah, gives us that to. nudge. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes I've, I've planned and prepared, and then I sense that nudge, but if I hadn't taken those steps, I wouldn't have gotten the next one, and exactly. that's important. Exactly. And one of the things that I love, Adonis, that you put in your book next, and in terms of making our next days our best days is that when we're on this process, yes. you know, really not to forget to help other Absolutely. people along Absolutely. the way. Yeah. How important is that? I think that is, is very key, uh, Monica, because we're always sowing into others. And I believe that's the lifestyle yeah. that God wants us to lead. And we don't want to get so tunnel vision to where all we're doing is focusing on ourselves. That's exactly now, here's right. the deal. If you have a dream from God, I guarantee you it's about helping other people and yes. reaching other people. If it's just to bless you, then it's not really a God dream. It's, it's almost a self-centered dream. Uh, but well, and God, all self-centered yeah. dreams turn inward and they exactly. ruin us. Exactly. You know, so yes. that helping others, to me, that giving back is, is essential. Yeah. That is so key. So if there's something that, that you know, you know, Find those people around you that are that are that are where you used to be, and uh, connect with them and, and give them a platform where they can ask you questions. And don't be afraid to share your real story with them and the struggles that it took, because they need to know that. Because so many times people can look at your success and they'll say, "Well, there's no way I can I can be a TV host like Monica. She mm -hmm. has it all together. Everything's in place, and <laughs> she just flows." That's funny. <laughs> you know? So so that's the deal. And so people will look at that, but when they're able to sit down with you. Mm -hmm. Monica, can you tell me what, what's some of your backstory? And, and, and they find out where you started and then it connects with them. And so any advice that we can give people or just a helping hand, if, if you know that you, it, it's within your power to connect somebody with somebody who they need to be connected That's with, right. listen, don't be jealous of no. that. Don't withhold that. No. That's a blessing to that person. Yes, and is. the more you do that, then you're really setting yourself up for God to bring those right connections yes. into your life as well. Yeah, it's just rewarding to That's connect it. people yes. with other people to help make that happen. It's a way to grow the kingdom. It's a way to please God. And it just, it confirms to us again and again yes. how good it is to help people and helps us in what we're trying to do in terms Absolutely. of making our next days our best yes. days. Yes, yes, because it all involves other people. Yes. That's the deal. If it's a God dream, then it's it's people oriented, right. you know? And so when you're on your journey, man, I'll tell people, always be looking around you because there's somebody who, who's looking up to you. Not that you're all of that, no. but there's somebody who's looking up to you because they're recognizing, man, they're, they're doing some things that I want to do. So I'm always looking for those people. I don't know it all, but what I do know, I'm willing to give it to other people. You've got that right. Yeah. Thank you for coming today and for sharing. <laughs> oh, thank you. We're talking about Adonis Lindsay's book, Next, talking about make your next days your best days. And Chris Taft, after the break, is going to come back and join us and talk about how he accomplished his dream of playing for the NBA and then developed a sickness that stopped that dream short. But he didn't let that defeat him. He's going to tell us his story of how he stepped forward and went ahead on the journey of making his next days his best days. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org. If you are just joining us today on Bridges, we're going to talk about how it's never too late to make your next days your best days. And my guest right now is Chris Taft. And Chris, it's so good to have you here today. No problem. Thanks for having me. I'm honored. Well, I'm so glad to have you. You really have a next story because in your life you, you planned and, and played for the NBA yep. and that was your dream. Yep. And then an injury, as I understand it, turned into sickness and ended that. Maybe you could tell us about it. Yeah, growing up in Brooklyn, New York, my dream, as most people dreams were, as far as sports was to play in the NBA. And mm -hmm. I understood as I got older that less than 1% of people make it to the NBA. So that's something, that's a, it's a, big, that's dream. a big, big dream yeah. to have that there's great chances of it not being accomplished. Mm -hmm. But I was the type of person that had a mindset of never giving up. If I have a dream for something, dream big. You know, let nothing, nobody tell you you can't accomplish your dream. Mm -hmm. And through a lot of hard work and a lot of just loving the game, studying the game, like being around great, great people, I was able to accomplish my dream of playing in the NBA. And But just like that, I accomplished my dream and during my rookie season, I got hurt. 
I hurt my back, had back surgery, but going into my back surgery, I started noticing I was dealing with other things I didn't have anything to do with my back. Mm -hmm. I had to do with my muscles. My muscles was weak, weak to the point that I couldn't lift my arms and legs up, and I'm... That had to be frightening. Very, very frightening, especially being 20 years old. Yeah. And at the time, like every 20-year-old, you think you're Superman. That's think right. You can do everything. Yeah. And I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm playing professionally in NBA, and I'm thinking that physically nothing can happen to me. Mm -hmm. And I've been playing basketball for nine to ten straight years, yeah. injury-free. So that make that gave me more confidence, believe that nothing could happen to me. But I got hurt, got injured, got ill, and I'm laying in the hospital bed hearing from doctors that I got diagnosed with inflammatory muscle condition and disease called polymyositis. Mm -hmm. And it was so bad that I really literally couldn't walk and do things. So how can I play basketball? And basketball is a running, jumping, physical pushing game. And yes. I'm struggling to walk and lift my arms up. And I mean, you know, when I just think about it from your perspective, scary even as a human being yeah. not to be able to walk, but yes. to be an NBA player, and this is what you've worked for your entire life, yep. Yep. and it's all in question. Yep. It's very, very scary. It's mm -hmm. very, very frustrating, especially um, you, you hear about injuries like a broken ankle, your knee, sure. your back, shoulder. I've never heard of polymyositis. And when I say to people, most of them never heard of it. No, I, I've so, never heard of exactly, it. Exactly. So just hearing said it. from a doctor that you have something that you never heard of mm -hmm. is scary. And then hearing from doctors saying that you probably you won't be able to do what you worked your whole life to do and you love so much playing basketball to me that was the only thing that i wanted to do that's the only mm -hmm. thing i focused and gave everything for was to do that and then now i can't do it and physically at the time i really couldn't do it yeah. so i had to make a decision at that moment am i gonna just be like okay i can't do it stop trying to do it or am i going to you know what focus and do everything I can to prove the doctor wrong. And my wife, who was so great, I was dating at the time, she was the first person to talk to me about God, talk to me about praying, scriptures, like just asking me, straight up ask me, do you know God? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you go to church? And I never was really asked that like that. Yeah. I don't know if it was something about being in that vulnerable or in that position of taking it in and listening like that because my family, who I love and support, wasn't really there for me like the way I thought that they would, mm -hmm. and I was doing so much for them. Some family members were, but there was a lot more that I was expecting to be there that wasn't. And when my wife asked me that at that time, I was like, no, God, he's not. And if he's so, these are things that's going through. If he's so good and great, why am I going through this? And that's an honest question. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are afraid to admit that. Yep. But for most of us, when hardship, and what you're talking about is a, a big hardship, if God is so good, why am I going through this? Yep. And what is next for yep. my life? What is yep. God thinking for my life? So you've got a girlfriend who's your wife now mm -hmm. that, that thought enough to ask you, are you praying the scriptures? And yep. So you've got these questions about God. Then what do you do, Chris? Then what, what do I do is we, um, I finally made a decision to start going to church because she was telling me about it and other people started telling me about it as well. And I realized, hey, I went 21 years of my life without it. You know, I might as well try to change and do something to see what could happen. So I started going to church. I'll never forget this day, June 24th, 2007. I was 22 years old. I gave my life to Christ. And my wife walked down the aisle with me, and she rededicated her life to Christ. So it was such a blessing and so powerful. And God is so good. God healed me. And doctors told me I would. That's, that disease was something that can never be cured. It can be controlled but mm -hmm. I would still have to deal with it at some points. I'm not dealing with it at all. I'm That's not taking awesome. medicines anymore. <laughs> I went back and I played basketball two and a half years later and they told me I would never play again. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that I've been able to do because of God's healing power and because I had such a wonderful woman like my wife who just believed in me and was real with me like that. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it takes that. And I think, you know, Chris, for people that are watching, it may not have ever been a dream, you know, to be in the NBA, but sometimes 
people have financial reversals. Yep. Sometimes people, you know, we work at a job for many years, we lose that job. We're married and through no choice of our own, you know, our spouse doesn't want to be in the marriage anymore. We all have those moments where what we thought was going to be is not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have to decide what's next. And you're saying because of the woman who's now your wife yep. and her asking you that question, you made that decision to live for Christ. Yep. And he brought physical healing and yep. gave you some of that dream back. But even then, you still had to come up with what's next now. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now? Well, now what I'm doing now, which I love what I'm doing, I'm, I'm able to travel whenever I get blessed with the opportunity to do public speaking, mm -hmm. motivational speaking, just sharing my story, kind of like how we're, I'm talking yes. to you now, sharing my story, but I'm able to do it with churches, with school assemblies. And it's such a blessing because there's so many kids that I kind of see how I was at their age, yeah. just not having a father. My father was never in my life, so I struggled a lot with that. Just mm -hmm. growing up in a rough neighborhood, not having it financially, like I didn't have it financially. And at that time, I'm able to go there and share my story, like, just like my dream was able to go tr come true, just like God was able to do so many great things for me, He can do the same thing for you. He yes. loves you just like He loves all of us. Mm -hmm. And when I go in there and speak to NBA, I already have everybody's attention. He's a former NBA guy. Right. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm using that, but in a good way. Because right. I can, I cannot speak in the first two minutes, everybody just at all because of my height and because I played and because of what I'm doing now. But I love that because I'm able to have that opportunity to share something. And it's pressure because you want to make sure you're saying something that's great and honest, which is what I always do. But mm -hmm. I love being able to do that and changing lives. I still, I got a Facebook message this morning from a mom who I spoke to, I spoke to her son two years ago. Mm -hmm. And she just said, I just want you to let you know that I just thank you so much for what you've done for me and my family. And it's such a blessing just hearing your story, mm -hmm. just you talking to my son, praying with my son, mm -hmm. like just telling them just that, you know, I love you, we love you, and there's great, great things in store. Mm -hmm. And that's so, so powerful. The NBA stuff was great. Like, yes. I'm not going to lie, a part of me misses it and sure. wishes that. But what I'm able to do now and just hearing messages like that, to me, that's so much more powerful because that's something that's for a lifetime and it's for generations because his family and then on and on and on right. and it's so powerful. And you think that young man that who you prayed for in his life as he grows up, his children, yep. his yep. sons, as yep. you're saying, it goes on from generation to generation. And I think Chris, you know, my heart, I've always had uh, kind of a soft spot, especially for boys because so many boys mm -hmm. don't have fathers in the home. Yes. They don't have somebody that loves them and that really speaks life into their mm -hmm. hope and their future. And, if, and you know, we know that there are lots of men who are good dads. So, but I'm just saying with that void there, we need men that will, yep. will speak up and will do that. And you're saying that really, as I listen to your story, that while you worked so hard for the NBA and you got it, and even admittedly miss it somewhat mm -hmm. now, you see the eternal purposes yep. of what you're doing. And I think that that's what's essential for all of us in terms of what's next is like, will we trust God for that next step and that yep. what he has, you know, is better than what we've dreamed. Do you see that now in your life? Yeah, I definitely see that now in my life. And I also just want to say, even though my father wasn't there, I've learned from him not being there because I'm blessed now with, like I said, with a wife and we have three yeah. wonderful kids and I'm in their lives all the time. Yes. And a part of that is because I've, I've witnessed and felt what it is to not have somebody there that made me want to be there. I was going to be a part of my family's life no matter what, but it went from 100% to 150%. <laughs> and my mother, grandmother, and aunt is so amazing. They raised me. Yes. And I love them so much. Amen. My grandmother passed away last year, and I was very, very tough to deal with. But they've been such, such a blessing in my life from day one, and mm -hmm. there was no excuses. Like, they're not there, okay. They came in, they took care of me, my brother, all my 20 to 50 cousins, and <laughs> everybody, and it was such a blessing. They're such, such strong women, yeah. such strong women. Yeah. I thank them so much for all they've done. Amen, and it's so important, I think, for all of us, you know, whoever we had in our life, it's not always 
all the people that we might have liked, but mm -hmm. whoever gave and whoever yep. shared and whoever helped, that I think that we honor and that, that we respect them. One of the things I want to ask you about, Chris, because you talked about, you know, when you had your dream for the NBA, that you worked, you studied the game. Yep. And I think that that's so important because some people think that, you know, when we become a Christian that God just makes everything happen. Mm -hmm. And he does open doors but we have to be prepared. Yep, yep. So if you could kind of speak to preparation, not only for the NBA, but even in terms of what you do now. Well, I'll say the, the preparation is very, very key because mm -hmm. you have to be prepared. You can't just go into something just thinking that your talents is just gonna give you exactly what you right. need. Like when I'm going up there to speak and share, yes, a lot of it is me speaking from the heart, but I'm praying before I get up there. I'm just, I'm envisioning and thinking about how this this person and that person. After I speak at one place, I'm just thinking about how it went and I'm spending time, you know, because there's some schools you can't really talk about God like that. You gotta, you know, you gotta change one word for faith and you gotta make sure you can't say that word. But there's some schools when you, when you go to that, you can be able to just be free to like share. And I love being able to do that. And you gotta make sure you have scriptures. So I'm, I'm studying, I'm doing so much stuff and you gotta spend, time doing it mm -hmm. so what are some of the things you think Chris would be essential to somebody who's watching right now that you know whatever they dreamed about whatever he or she dreamed about that won't be happening mm -hmm. at all or won't be happening anymore mm -hmm. Th things that steps that you would recommend somebody would take to embrace what God has next yeah I would say um, if for one dream big and always believe even if it doesn't happen now that doesn't mean it's not going to happen right. and if it does not happen, maybe that scars protection because you wasn't supposed to, something bad could have happened from you mm -hmm. going there. And I've learned that a lot because there's been a lot of things that I wanted to do and that door would be closed. And from the beginning, yeah. I used to be really frustrated by that, but mm -hmm. now I understand that would just scars protection. I wasn't Amen. supposed to be a part of that. And yeah. God's protection is something great. So those people out there that's really, you know, wondering what's next, you know, wondering what to do now, believing and dreaming for certain things that hasn't happened yet. Keep believing, keep trusting, keep studying, and great, great things can happen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. It's been a joy to talk to you today. No problem. Thank you. And I just want to thank everybody listening. And just, it's been an awesome honor. And I'm so blessed and privileged to be a part of this. Thank you. Well, we're glad to have you. We are completely out of time right now. We thank you, though, for joining us today on Bridges. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. You can purchase a copy of today's show for $15. Call us at 615-754-0039 or send a check to the address on the screen. Please mention the program number on the screen. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. The blood of Christ is the only cure. It gets down to the root of every single thing that ails us. There's not an addiction, there's not a generational curse, there's not any root of sin, there's nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your event. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org have a ministry or business? You can contact Nashville's WHTN for studio and programming rates. Visit ctntv.org studio or call 615-754-0039 for more details.